Hey, Grant Swain McGuire Head School. Over at the shop today, thought today we'd do something a little different. If you look over my shoulder over here, you'll, you'll see the tail end of a race car. And so uh, let's take a look at that today. And I think you got a pretty good physics lesson today based on the race car. Let's just leave the studio and grab the old GoPro and go for a little walk around. This belongs to one of the techs here. This is Amateur Racing Sports Car Club of America. Uh, this is a f pretty serious race car. Um, like I said, it's called Amateur. Don't pay any money. It's all for bragging rights. And I have to grab my notes from time to time, make sure I'm taking the right thing. Let me go grab them here. Yeah. yeah this is a. Uh, 1990 Acura Integra. Um, it's F production. It runs with uh, other cars, not all Acura Integras. Their SCCA puts cars together uh, that are, should be competitive, and uh, there's the control of the modifications, even though it looks heavily modified, and it, and it is. Uh, we'll just do a walk around, then I want to do a little physics lesson here. Uh, he just, uh, this, this recently allowed you to go to, uh, other than the stock brakes, there's wheel wood brakes in the front. Then it gets complicated, then the wheel hit the calipers and then with the spacers, and then we're pushing on track. There's a maximum track, and we're right at it, so uh, trying to get a little more uh, breathing room on that. They require cages. It's a real nice cage. Uh, got a local guy. Uh, that only works for people he wants to work for. Great cage builder. Uh, you see everything stripped out of here, but the necessaries. Uh, Jim's son is the driver. Got a little father-son thing going on there. And uh, like I say, everything comes out that's not necessary. We're talking about that. That's going to be the basics of a physics lesson here in a second. Uh, a lot of work. Uh, it runs on slicks, but then you got to have rain tires just in case somebody's constantly watching the weather, uh, particularly if you've got a storm coming in, to decide do I need to put it? Because the, the most race lasts about half hour, 45 minutes, and you don't get stuck on the track with slicks with, with water. That's not very good. So there's the rain tires. Of course, safety, you got to have the net to keep uh, the arms from coming out on rollover. Actually, their arms are restricted with some other tie-downs. Uh, onboard fire extinguisher, all you got to do, we'll walk around and take a look at that. Uh, you do see gearhead school on the car. Uh, quite frankly, I don't pay me any money. And Jim and I go way back, I actually used to work for me. And... Uh, I crew. As much as I can, I go along and, and crew on the car. Uh, don't help build a car much, even though I can. I do some. He likes to build it. So back around to the safety stuff. If you look down there, there's a uh, master kill switch that kills all the electricity on the car. The driver can reach it, but sometimes the driver's not able. You know, the driver gets unconscious because of a pretty bad crash and they're knocked unconscious. There's a cable over here so the uh, course worker can pull electrical. Same thing on onboard extinguisher. Uh, this fire extinguisher is plumbed in and has nozzles at strategic places uh, inside the fuel cell and for the driver. And uh, of course the driver can uh, can pull the pin on this, on this, there's a red pull handle right there. Or the course worker can pull if the driver's not capable. So the curb weight, well this car weighed when it was bought off the showroom floor, is 3,684 pounds. The rules say when this thing's race with the driver, it's got to weigh 2,235 pounds. Got a 150 pound driver, so we're now down to this car needs to weigh 2,085 without a driver. So it means 1,600 pounds of weight's been pulled out of, of this car. That takes a lot of time and money and effort. Uh, I think you see on here, just the bottom side of this you know, trunk deck is a holes drill all in it. Uh, all the trims pull out. These braces to the back wind, uh, window, which is actually a plexiglass, won't vibrate. It has 
hours and hours of drilling holes in this in the luminous strips. And if take the camera looked around, everywhere you look, you'll see things lightened up. It, bottom line, if it's not necessary for the function of the car or the safety of the driver, and the rules allow it, it comes out of the car. So you're gonna say, well, wow, uh, you know, we're we're underweight. Well, actually, somewhere around several hundred pounds underweight. You know, so we, uh, of course, the car can run lighter in the race class than stock. But when all smoke clears, we still got several hundred pounds too light. And that's a good thing because you take it out of places where you don't want it and put it back where you want it. Now, where do you want it? Well, you know, you want a low center of gravity. So everything, you know, the lower the center of gravity on the car is, the less effect when you go through a turn that tires are sticking to the road and the inertia of the car when it wants to go straight. And so if you take the, there's some point on this car, if you take a mathematically calculate all the weight at every location, there'll be a point somewhere inside the car, you know, left to right, front to rear, there's a finite point there that's considered the center of gravity. If you could pick the car up by that point, imaginary point, it does exist, the car be level. It would be left, right, front, rear would be sitting perfectly straight. That's the center of gravity. And all your calculations could be taken off of that as far as the forces through turns and, and, and that. You can actually measure it by, it's kind of complicated, you have to weigh the car precisely level on all four wheels and then raise one axle up a certain amount of, and then reweigh them and then do a lot of math. You can actually find out where the center of gravity is. You want to get the center of gravity as low as possible. It should make sense. So that means we're probably going to add the weight back very low. There's a second part of this physics lesson. It's called the polar moment of inertia. And what you want to do is anytime you have something that's going to be rotating, the car does have a turn. Instead of going just straight, it's not a drag strip. This is a road race course. So if you can take all your weight and put it more towards centrally located in the middle of the car, it's quicker to turn. Like I say, it's called polar moment of inertia. And the idea is if I got something way out in the center, uh, it has mass and it's further out there and it's hard to move that around. Uh, the best example of this is like you see the Olympic skaters and they're spinning around and they got their kind of arms out and they pull the arms in and all of a sudden they just take off spinning faster. That's because they pull that into a tighter and all the energy can now spin faster. And, uh, so. Where do you think we added the weight? Let me grab the GoPro, we'll go take a look. Well, not back here. Everything looks nice and sparse. Got the helmet and some shoes there. There's your fuel cell. Uh, only way, it's only like less than 10 gallons. All we need is a few gallons. The race is so short. It's not like NASCAR where you need 20 gallons or so. As you can imagine, there's the weight. This is plate steel bolted to the floorboard. You got to bolt it down extremely well. Grade eight bolts. Uh, the car wrecks and this stuff comes loose. You know, Ben's going to be in bad state of affairs. We'll do a final weigh at the track and uh, see what Ben weighs. Get Ben in there and weigh the car at the scales. And uh, so this puts the weight on the floorboard but also in the middle of the car beside the driver. So this is the middle of the car. So this was uh, gets the center of gravity down and also increases the polar moment of inertia of this vehicle. Since we were moving the weight from out the far ends, the back of the hatch area and under the hood, and move it and put it on the floorboard. So this wraps up our physics lesson today on center of gravity and polar moment of inertia. Bye.